What's up, people? Uh, let me grab my wipe before we stop. Okay, so this is gonna be a freestyle to myself, basically. Um, so I think about a month ago, maybe three weeks ago, I switched up my training uh, goals, style, everything to be around, to basically prime myself for a WWE tryout, which involved a lot of conditioning, a lot of old school wrestling conditioning, so you thousand squats, push-ups, uh, jumping jacks, high knees, all of that stuff. Um, and my philosophy about that was, instead of waiting to get accepted on an invitation to a tryout, and then get them ready, stay ready. Um, thank God I did that. Thank God I'm that type of person because what it has done is, is it's exposed me to myself. It exposed my weaknesses getting pushed to these levels because I've never really trained like that. I have no experience training like that. I didn't know what to, uh, what to think of what was to come. So, I think it's very cool that my body can adjust and I'm capable and my brain is capable of doing the 1,000 squats, the 1,000 push-ups, uh, the jumping jacks, the high knees, the hours of chin-ups. That's cool that I can adjust and get there if I need be, but my body definitely isn't ready for it. Um, I've never had any issues with my knees, ever. Um, and after the first time I did the thousand squats, my left knee on the inside has been pissed off ever since. I've been icing it, I've been heating it, all of that. And it's literally just getting worse. So I cut squats out uh, completely. Um, same thing with, and I was doing push-ups, but I'm hurting my shoulder, I'm doing chin-ups, but I'm still hurting my shoulders. I can do this stuff, but my body isn't ready for it yet. My, more my, my I'm doing it, but I'm damaging myself. You know, my brain and my muscles itself can do it, but the, the tendons, the ligaments, the cartilage cannot do it yet because I'm jumping in too quick. So, so, and the number one most common injury for wrestlers is their knees. Uh, super common. So, um, at the same time, I've become more, I've becoming more and more conscious of. The athletic truth group knees over toes guy where he basically has he hasn't found a way but he's put a lot of stuff together and he is showing the world how to basically bulletproof their knees and and a lot of evidence and like you know the proofs in the pudding a lot of, a lot of pudding is showing that like you can do these certain exercises not only do they make you more athletic but they make you so much less likely for injury and they actually improve a lot of your knees and your hips ankles all of this stuff so i can't afford to go on athletic truth group i think it's like 50 dollars a month or something but i can get the gist of what he's saying so i'm gonna work off that so my training again we need to evolve uh I'm keeping my strength training in because you always want to get stronger. I got rid of conventional deadlift and now using low bar trap, trap bar, low handle trap bar, um, because they test for your trap bar in the tryout. I'm still going to bench press because they um, they test your bench in the combine. I know that. Uh, sorry, in the combine or the tryout. So the combine, what they do is they take your body weight, they put it on the bench, and they want you to bench it three times as quick as you can. Uh, it's an athletic test, a, a fast uh, twitch muscle fiber test, and just a general strength test. I'm definitely, gonna, I wanna keep front squats in because I feel like that is the most athletic exercise you can do. I don't think anything comes close to a front squat. A good front squat is like one of the best movers in the world. Um, and overhead press, I think, is probably the best upper body strength indicator there is. If you're weak, if you have weak lats, if you have weak shoulders, if you have weak uh, neck, if you have a weak uh, chest, triceps, you're not going to overhead press good weight. So I'm going to keep 
them four in as a staple. Them four in as a staple. However, I think the main focus as of now for me should be healing, strengthening, and then bulletproofing my knees. And the number one muscle, which seems to be to go for, is the hamstring. Um, it's the hamstring, and then the next is the VMO and the quad. But if you can do a full Nordic curl, all the way to the bottom, all the way back up, you're not going to have bad knees. Simple as that. You're going to have strong knees. You're going to have strong fucking hamstrings. Um, and hamstring is probably the most athletic muscle in the body, right? You jump, you, you sprint, whatever. So, still going to have my four strength exercises. Uh, I'm still going to do that. And I think what I should start focusing on is the Nordic Co itself. Maybe three times a week I'm going to start doing that. Um, three times a week I'm going to start doing that. After every every training session anyway, I do my leg curls. I think on the day I don't do my leg curls, I'm going to do the Nordic curls. So every other day. Uh, direct a lot of hip flexor work, strengthening that. We'll get some tib work in as well. Tips every other day, hip flexors every other day, so they'll alternate. Uh, I'll hit the hamstrings every single day, whether they're banded leg curls and then Nordic curls the next day. Um, that's going to be a big focus. Uh, now, his number, and then the split squat. So the ATG split squat uh, is, I'll show you. Let's see if I can do this on camera. Essentially, it's, Okay, so your back, your back foot's here, your back leg's at full extension, and then your front foot comes up. That's that was my knee. And you're you're squatting, you're, you're doing the split squat, and your knee is way over your toes, and everything's connected like this. I've I've added that into my lower body warm up, so I'm doing that with my body weight three times a week because I'm going to start doing lower body three times a week. Uh, I think I should do, I think I should actually do it with weights once a week as well. Uh, and then the next thing, his favorite exercise is, is the sled pulls. Now I have a home gym and a shed, so I don't have a sled, but I have been pulling my car back and forth. Uh, it works, but it's just very impractical and very hard to set up uh, to do every day. So, I mean, I got that 24 kg kettlebell. I've been thinking about putting that on like a, on a pillow and dragging it through my house with a chain. I don't know. I need to figure out a way to, to do some pulls every day. So basically, I'm evolving my training into, let's say, well, really, I'm gonna be getting stronger. Uh, I'm gonna be getting I'm gonna be getting stronger in the main four lift still, but I think my main focus in training right now is to get good knees again, strong knees, bulletproof knees. So I think that Nordic curl needs to be the exercise I'm on. The uh, the Nordic curl, the sled pulls, the tib raises, all of this stuff. Um, yes, and I think my conditioning needs to become more cardio for now so less muscle endurance more actual endurance i think i'll keep the high knees keep my high knees in I'm not gonna do any push-ups i think chin-ups are a great exercise so i think i should still do some chin-ups i think i'll do chin-ups uh chin-ups high knees and maybe just jump rope for longer periods of time. I think that's what I should do. Uh, so let's put this on paper, on the whiteboard. Let's say Monday morning, do my deadlift. Tuesday, let's say I bench. 
and then I'll do Wednesday our front squat. Friday our overhead press. Thursday our overhead press. Friday I'll, I'm gonna do the ATG split squat. So on the deadlift day, let's do the lower bodies, right? So when I deadlift and after I squat, straight into a Nordic on both days, Nordic there and then a Nordic on the front squat. And I think after I do my split squats on Friday, I'll do a Nordic as well, progress where I can. After the Nordic, I'll do, what will I be doing? Uh, I do my neck before I before I do anything. Now I do my neck, then I do my warm ups. So I do my yoga in the morning, then I do my neck work, then I do my um, dynamic warm up stretches for the body part I'm working, so upper and lower. Then I do my main lift. So I do my deadlift, then I do my Nordic. After the Nordic, I will do, sorry, Nordic is the main exercise for the lower body after the strength. After the strength and the upper body, we'll do some rows or lap pull downs. I need some lap pull downs. Kind of best of both worlds. So I'm gonna do that. That is the so dead blah blah blah. blah, blah. Uh, then I'll get my what comes next. What do, what do I usually do after that? I usually do leg curls. So on the days I don't do leg curls, this is what's gonna happen. On the days I do Nordics, so lower bodies, I'll do hip flexors. Another thing as well, I'm really intrigued by the Jefferson curl, which is where you stand something high, you have a weight and, oh, phones are low battery, and you, you basically curl your body down and you, you flex, you curl the spine and then you stand up and it stretches your calves, your hamstrings, your glutes, everything while strengthening your spine in a flexed position, which is really cool. There's a lot of stuff to put in though. I think I'm going to have to add where I can. So let's say I work out five days a week. Let's say five days a week. Monday to Friday, I work out. So Monday, I do the deadlift, Nordic, then some hip flexes. Uh, and on the other days, I'll do leg curls there. When I squat, I'll do hip flexes as well. Leg curls again. Hmm. I'm not sure what to do on the Friday after the split squat Nordic. You reckon I could do Jefferson curls on my upper body days?
maybe. Because you get a good stretch in the upper body as well. That T, that spine, that T spine, the lower spine. And it's not, it's not going to be too intense for my lower body. But I don't know. I've never done it. Let's try it. Jeff goes. Jeff. Tips. So, it's very fucking basic workouts, which is cool. Literally, deadlift, Nordic, hip flexors, tips, and then on the upper bodies, I'll do Jefferson curls and leg curls. Lower bodies, I'll do hip flexors and tips. Upper body, I'll do Jefferson leg curls. On that Friday, the the, the non-normal strength training day, I'll do the athletic, uh, ATG split squats, with some Nordics, Yep. So my legs are going to be pretty hit there. Don't have to do leg curls in that day because I'm doing the Nordics. I can either do... thinking either like tibs and calves or yeah I think I'll do that no I know I'm doing I do hip flexors and tibs it's a lower body workout and that is that so you can see there's no arm work here but I'm benching I'm overhead pressing doing lap pulls there's no bicep work there's never ever really any bicep work in my training because I don't row and I don't do any bicep work unless I row on the nah uh, nah fuck that So my cardio is going to be high knees after doing hip flexor work. Fuck it. So that's the conditioning. So that is literally all I'm going to do in the gym. Lifting weights wise. That's that. And then what we'll do is we'll add in some... A lot of pressing. So on the upper body days I'll do some chin ups. Chin ups, chin ups, and then we'll do high knees on Monday, high knees on Wednesday, and on Friday. I think just some jump rope. I think just some jump rope. Yeah. And that's pretty much super basic, but like you can't go wrong when it's basic, right? So 
that is what I'm gonna do Monday to Friday. Obviously, when I wake up, I do my yoga. Uh, I do my yoga and then I do my neck gauntlet, which is all four directions. Then I do my dynamic warm ups for my upper body and my low, lower body and my upper body. Then I'll do these things. Um, conditioning at the bottom that will happen later in the day, most probably. So there's that. And I need to figure out how to do some some sled pulls every day. Weighted walking backwards every day. Pulling something every day. I need to figure that out and I can put that in somewhere. Maybe before the conditioning as a warm up. Who knows? Or after. But that's that's that. So conditioning training is evolving. I've I dived headfirst in conditioning and before we go further, I think my body, my tendons, my ligaments, my cartilage, my muscles need to be stronger in certain spots so I can safely get more conditioned and get rid of it. It's good because it exposed me. If I waited for the tryout, then I started to do this stuff, I would have gone in fucked. You know, I'm, I'm happy I've done all of this stuff super early so now I can readjust and evolve where need be, which is really good. I'm, a, I'm happy with that so we'll start this today it's Wednesday today so today I'll do some front squats Nordics uh, hip flexors tips uh, my high knees cool yeah uh, I might I'll probably work out on Saturdays just because I like working out maybe something light on Saturdays like an arm day or something, you know. My arms are tiny because I don't, I don't train them. You know what I mean? I don't train them. I think they're like 16 inches or something, which is just from literally just from probably bench and, and bench. You know, they barely have any biceps because I don't train them. So maybe on Saturdays. The problem is, Saturdays my morning is I train. I train wrestling for like four hours. So, and if we have a show, it's usually on a Saturday. So. Maybe I'll add some sort of arm day light upper body pump and fluff and some rows. Maybe. Maybe. But other than that, deadlift once a week, bench once a week. The only stuff I do multiple times a week is like joint training and and like hamstring stuff and knee stuff and hip stuff now because that's the priority. The priority isn't my bench. The priority isn't my overhead press. It's not my deadlift. Priority is getting healthy again in the joints, strengthening them, and it eventually become a bulletproof. Uh, so that is the new next step evolving. And I don't think the priority is going to change until I can basically do a Nordic car. So this will be the main focus probably for the next foreseeable future. Uh, I already have like good... Yeah, for the, for the foreseeable future, I, I'm... What month are we in? March is about to end, right? Which is the third month, so fourth. March, April, May, June, July. July is four months away. End of July is four months, so three months away. If I can nearly do one by then, that'd be great. Not the eccentric is the way down, isn't it? Yeah, so the concentric. So bringing yourself back up from the flat, that's fucking serious stuff. That's the main focus. So the main focus is bulletproof on my knees. And how I do that is by doing a bunch of exercises. However, the king of them exercises, I believe, is um, is a Nordic curl. So that's the main goal in the training. The main result of the training is bulletproof on my knees. And once I'm there and I can do Nordic curls, my hamstrings are going to be so much more stronger, uh, which is only going to help me on this athletic journey. So there you go. Uh, I'll, I'll carry on trying to put on weight as well the whole way through. I think I'm like 207, 208 pounds right now, which is about 92 kilos or something. Uh, yeah, I'm just slowly drink, drinking milk and eating good food and, you know, I'm putting on weight slowly but surely. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I'm happy with this. It's very, very simple training. I don't like doing a thousand things. I mean, really, really, 
I have one exercise a day, one big lift a day with a smaller lift as the agnostic uh, muscle accessory. And then there's a bunch of small things which I can do in a circuit. So really not much short and uh, short and simple sticking to the basics because the basics are the basics for a reason. They work. Uh, yeah, that's that. We'll see where we are in about three months or so. Easy.